Hey guys, well I haven't done a video in quite some time now and um, it's mainly just because I've been working but um, had a few things going on I thought I'd share with you. Um, most of you probably already know about this uh, scooter project that I've been working on. Um, it's kind of been on hold for a while, just had other things to do but um, tonight I thought I'd have a look at it again and see if I could um, touch it up and just get it a bit more closer to finished. Um, excuse the lighting here, I've just got a torch hanging up there. Um, yeah, for those of you that don't know, this is a, um, a Razer E300 electric scooter. Um, stock, they come with just a um, shitty little 250 watt brush motor. Um, which, you know, it works, but not quite as fun as this. So uh, what I did is put a, um, a Turnergy SK3 motor in it or something. It's a 245 kV, so 245 um, RPM per volt. Um, running on 24 volts, uh, two 5 amp hour lithium batteries, um, which basically gives me 24 volts at 10 amp hours. Um, it used to use old those big hunky lead acid batteries, the 7 amp hour ones, the standard size. Um, but yeah, lithium's definitely the way to go. Uh, it's a bit of a mess at the moment just because I've been mucking around with the uh, controller board I've made. Um, you probably already know as well that um, the controller board I've designed and um, built up myself. Um, basically just for this application. Um, I am planning to open source it at one stage um, well at some stage I guess um, but it is pretty application specific here. I mean I've designed it for what I needed so I haven't really put a lot of headroom into it for um, other designs and things like that but um, I don't know it still could be handy for some people even if they just want to steal some code examples or something off it for the um, you know the battery monitor chips and all that um, but in here, got the motor at the back here, probably can't see it that well. But um, that's actually enclo enclosed in an acrylic box um, that I've laser cut. And what that does is I've put a fan on the back here. And um, because uh, brushless motors, they're less efficient at lower speed, so they have less torque at lower speed, um, they tend to overheat rather quickly because they don't have much cooling at all. So that fan just helps keep it a little bit cooler, um, but it does have belt reduction in it, or chain reduction, so it's not running it too bad. Uh, it's a 2.7 2 kilowatt rated motor, um, but of course you can't really put that much power through it for long without burning it out, so not in this application anyway. Um, it's designed for a helicopter, which obviously has a lot more airflow. Um, driving it, I've just got a um, Turnergy Trackstar 150 amp ESC, um, just running uh, sensorless mode. Um, this one doesn't take sensors anyway, so don't have much options there. Another fan in the back there just for some airflow. Um, and this is the control board itself. Um, so this is the thing that I um, designed and made here. Um, as you can see, there's wires all over the place. It's a lot more complex than what the uh, original circuitry was. Um, but I mean, in terms of operation, it's pretty simple. I mean, on the front here, you've just got... Um, a main power input for charging, the uh, one on the right there, power switch, and then the one on the left is uh, for the balancing connection. Um, I could have built the charger into that controller board, but um, I decided it was easy just to use it externally and just have a connector there for it. Um, so on the controller board here, um, this connection on the side here, this is the battery cell input, so this is what actually powers the whole board um, and also monitors the battery cells. So. I've just got them hooked in parallel there, works fine. Um, above that, that's just a 12 volt output. Um, on the back of this board there's a little, um, we can't flip it over that easily. It's a little uh, Texas Instruments buck module there. So that's just taking the 24 volts and stepping it down to 12. Uh, that can handle about 6 amps or so. I've just got it running the uh, fans at the moment. Um, up the top here, this is just a uh, standard Ethernet cable um, that actually runs up to the display unit up the top here, which I'll go into a bit more detail in a minute. Um, this top cable here, um, this turns the ESC on and off, so that's so I can turn the uh, ESC off if the batteries go flat. Uh, this cable here, that goes to the current shunt, which is sort of down the back there underneath all the wiring. Um, this is the ESC control or signal cable um, and this is the main power switch here. So 
the power switch on the front here doesn't actually switch any of the current at all. It basically just enables this circuit which then enables everything else. Um, so essentially when this thing's off the current draws basically nothing except for what the uh, battery monitor chip draws um, which is a um, is it LTC6630 I don't know, 6803 minus 4 or something like that. I'll link it in the description anyway. Um, it's just running an AT Mega 328 as the uh, controller, microcontroller. Oh, and this connector down here. Um, that basically just acts as a bridge for the um, balance connector on the front there. Um, it also allows this board to detect when the charge is plugged in, which is really nifty because then I can have it disable the ESC while it's charging. So you know you can't accidentally take off with the cables plugged in, for example. But, um, yeah. It's basically all that's in there, just a whole mess of cables and stuff. Uh, the really neat thing about this system though is I've designed it in such a way that you only have to run two cables down the handlebars. Um, which you can see here, obviously you've got the uh, mechanical brake cable there, and then just this one Ethernet cable, um, which runs up to, up to here. Obviously the brakes, the mechanical brake. But then the throttle, which is just a thumb throttle, and also the brake switch is run into this control box here, um, which I need to find some way of mounting. Um, but as you can see, the Ethernet cable just runs into there as well. And on the back of that, can't really see it that well, but there's uh, another board with an AT Mega 328 and you know just a buzzer and the uh, LCD and all that sort of stuff on there as well. So basically, all this is just a um, LCD with four buttons across the front, um, so it has menus and all that sort of thing as well. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and turn it on. Get here everything power up. And uh, this is the display itself. Uh, so this is the home screen, I guess you could call it. Um, on the left here you've got a speed readout in large digits. Um, I've been having a few issues with the speed readout actually because the um, the speed input goes into an interrupt on the microcontroller um, and I'm using a hall sensor but um, I found that the hall sensor doesn't give signals that are defined well enough to count as a high or a low on the microcontroller so I had to use a, um, a comparator to basically give me a high or a low but it seems the motor is actually interfering with that so that's not working at the moment um, but over here you can see we've got um, total pack voltage and also the current as well um, but you've got these basically two different screens. This screen here basically just shows you all your cell voltages. So as you can see they're all, all pretty good. This one here doesn't do anything. Uh, these buttons are really bright. Um, and then the one on the end here is for the menu. Uh, so basically this is just going to have a bunch of settings and stuff in it. To edit the menu you just press this button here. And then you can edit the settings so you can sort of probably hear that the fans turned off when I did that. So if you wanted to put some like lights or something on there, you can do that. Um, to go to the next menu option, you just turn that off. You can set the um, cutoff voltages for the batteries, the wheel diameter, which um, calculates the speed, um, throttle limit as well. So uh, because of the really high power motor on this thing, if you wanted to let, well, I don't know, I guess kids have a go on it, you could, you know, dial down the throttle to, you know, whatever you want. That's just a handy feature to have, um, and also the beeper as well, which can get really irritating. So, it's option to disable that as well. But um, yeah, that's basically all it does at the moment. I mean, everything actually works. Um, it's going to be difficult to hear, but yes, yeah, so everything actually works already. Um, I'll try and show you a view of the current reading here. So if I increase the throttle. probably see that there. Um, obviously that current climbs a lot higher when you're actually on it. I've seen it get to about 150 amps so um, that's why there's three digits there. Uh, the ADC reading that shunts actually um, 16 bits um, and it's got an eight times um, programmable gain amplifier in it so um, that's actually really good resolution for what it is. Um, but you've also got a brake switch as well obviously so if you do that um, you basically can't push the 
well, it disables the throttle. I'm not going to be able to show you that well, but if I push the throttle, nothing happens. Um, but it also means that I've also set it up so if you push the throttle, um, then enable the brake, um, it won't let you accelerate again unless you let the throttle go back to zero and then push it on again. Because um, that actually caught me out the first time where I um, had the brake on and I still had the throttle pressed, let go of the brake and the thing tries to take off on you. So it's a really handy feature to have. Um, but I mean in terms of other features, there's a few more things I want to put into it such as um, uh, with brushless motors. Um, because it doesn't have any sensors or anything, it relies on the feedback from the motor. If you try and accelerate too quickly, um, the motor makes these really nasty grinding noises, uh, which can't be good for the uh, ESC or anything like that. So at some stage, once I get the speed sensor working, I'll probably set it up so that you can only go to like a maximum throttle um, based on whatever speed you're going. Um, but yeah, it's hot. Nah. This is a little speed sensor thing here, so it basically just plugs into that board. And at the other end, I've just got a little bodge comparator and a hall sensor there. So yeah, I think this is picking up interference from the motor here and then sending it down to the um, to the microcontroller. Now it's all tangled. Um, also on that as well, um, because the original base plate's only just plastic, um, I made up this really strong, I don't know what it's called, it's aluminium, but it's really strong for its um, thickness um, so that basically just sits over the top of that and then the original um, I don't know what you call it I guess deck sits over the top of that so that just means that you're not you know crushing the batteries or anything like that um, yeah Oops, there's a speed sensor on there again but uh, these are the cables I made up for charging as well so that actually plugs into the scooter on the side and that plugs into the charger itself and then same deal for the um, the actual charger cable itself too, which I've just got here. So we've just got the little screw connector on one end, and then a um, XT60 connector on the other. Um, oh yeah, I've got some um, addressable LED strip here as well. Uh, I'm going to use that for some Christmas lighting this year. Um, so yeah, I've been mucking around with that a bit as well. That's what the wire rolls are for. Yeah, that's really fun stuff. Um, but I'll do another video on that later. Um, I'll just show you the code quickly, what, what's going on here. Um, so basically we've got the two separate microcontrollers here. This code here is for the, um, for the display unit. Um, I was originally going to have one microcontroller do it all, but um, after figuring out all the features and stuff that's going to have, um, I decided it would be better to have one handling all the boring you know, display stuff that can take as long as it wants. Um, and then having another do all like the battery monitoring and controlling the throttle and all that stuff. Um, so basically just between the two boards they communicate via serial um, RS-232 I guess. Um, at 9,600 9, boards so not too quickly but not too slowly either. Um, and basically what how they communicate is I've just come up with um, basically my own data protocol where um, the main board sends data to the display board basically just separated by commas and then the display board figures out you know where that value was in the um, in the string and then separates it out into its own variables and whatever um, but since I needed to be able to communicate both ways with the board I also had to set it up so that um, the display board could also send serial back to the other board and for that I've used a, um, a technique that I use a fair bit which is basically use command letters so you could have you know a comma you know and then a value 250 or something so the data coming to the display board um, is basically just comma delimited um, and then the data going out of the display board is well control character based so that allows me to control things like the uh, throttle limit and whatever and set that on the actual main board so if the um, this camera is having a hard time focusing but if the display board ever becomes disconnected or whatever for some reason um, you've still got basically the bare level uh, bare level stuff going on um, the throttle and brake that run into the display board that actually just runs directly down the Ethernet cable um, it doesn't actually go into the display microcontroller at all um, that was just to neaten up the wiring a bit. Um, this code over here, this is the one that actually handles the um, battery and all that. 
Um, so this one's a bit more timing sensitive because it's got to be able to handle the throttle and be responsive as well. Um, but it's essentially the same deal except it's just got to read off the, uh, the current shunt and the battery monitor calculates the values, calculate the speed. So it's got the same serial code as the other one, so this one receives the values um, the, with the command characters like A, B, C and all that, writes them to their variables. Um, but yeah, then it also does some, you know, basic timing stuff. This is where it actually writes the throttle out to the ESC, does, you know, calculates the limits, all that, uh, checks the brakes, you know. Um, I store the values in um, EEPROM, so they retain the values when you turn it off and, you know, all that sort of stuff. This is where it actually sends the data to the main board through all this stuff here. You can see the uh, massive string with all the values in it. Yes, yeah, so that just uh, sends all the cell voltage and stuff individually, uh, delimited by commas. Um, but yeah, the rest of this is mainly just reading like the cell voltages and all this other random stuff. But um, yeah, apart from that, um, need to sort of put it back together and go try it out and see what happens, see if it's responsive enough. Um, but in terms of the code, everything mostly works. Um, still a couple of bugs, like I said, the speed sensor doesn't work and. Um, I mean, it works fine until you actually enable the motor, then the thing just craps out on you, so yeah, it'd be interesting figuring that out. I might have to switch to like a, um, a whole switch instead of a whole sensor, because that way it's not as susceptible to EMI from the motor. But um, anyway, um, just thought I'd do a catch-up video. Um, I'll do another video on the uh, addressable LED strips when I get around to it. Um, yeah, that stuff's really fun to play around with. Um, I'll also put a link to the seller and all that. I found some stuff uh, pretty cheap. Um, yeah, I'll leave that for another video. But yeah, thanks for watching, um, and I'll make another video in a bit.